Welcome to The Upper Room on Gilgal TV Network. Hello, this is Gilgal TV Network, and we welcome you to The Upper Room. The Upper Room promotes the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ through the breakdown and analysis of Christian books based on biblical principles. These biblical principles form the bedrock of many books written by our dear man of God, God, Pastor Jerry Udo. The revelational teacher, he's our preacher, our leader, and the foundation of Gilgal Christian Center. This is the platform to dissect, study, critically analyze how these books have practical application to and in our daily living. The Upper Room is a program that promotes an in-depth breakdown of Christian books. Learn how these principles affect and can practically enhance your life. Join our set of panelists every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, for the weekly episode on our Gilgal TV network. It is time for inspirational, motivational, and refresh yourself in the spirit as we prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come join us in the upper room. Hello everyone, and one, welcome once again to our newest episode on Upper Room. Today we'll be discussing what sin is. Sin is a very large topic in the Christian world. We're always trying to define it in so many different ways. Today we'll spend so, many, so much time dissecting that and understanding what makes a Christian sin and does God expect us to remain sinless. My name is Janet Omandi. And I'm here with... Seth Amwako Ellis. Odell Nouvelle. And I am Kenne. And we'll just go ahead and start from the top. So what do you guys define as <coughs> sin? Personally, what my definition of what sin is, is anything that you deliberately do, think, or say, or desire that goes against God's law, which is obviously the Ten Commandments and many other things that he said throughout the Bible. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. I, I feel like sin is um, getting pleasure of the flesh over God's pleasing. Like when you take pleasure in yourself, despite, you know, knowing what's right and wrong. I think yeah. that's what sin is. Yeah, I also think, yeah, um, the same thing. Sin is kind of opposite of worship, you know. Um, going away from the dictates and the things that God has put in place, you know, for his, you know, for, you know, foundation and how, how it's meant to be, going contrary to what God has already ordained. Yeah, I would say that um, to take it from the, the bottom, sin is acting against a um, set of rules, um, code of ethics, mm -hmm. and anything that the society, they have agreed to use it as a yardstick to check behavior of um, the people. So if you go against such rules, you have sin against uh, uh, the people and they ought to take action. So that is our, uh, my basic uh, I feel like with the whole sin situation for a very long time I thought anything that had to, anything outside of the Ten Commandments was sin. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like now there's other laws um, that God mentions in the Bible, things like you know, how we relate to the Holy Spirit, how you relate to others, how you relate in, in uh, regards to your walk in um, the Christian faith that can all end up as sin. Like recently we were just discussing in our Bible study how, you know, um, people can be, you can sin against God by how you manage your family, how you manage your marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's something that nobody really discusses, <coughs> nobody really talks about because obviously it's not in the Ten Commandments or it's not said, okay, if you... Um, do not submit to your husband, or if your husband does not, you know, do A, B, and C, it's not a sin because it's not said on, um, on, in the Ten Commandments. I feel like there is more to, you know, what the law of God is outside. Even though the Ten Commandments is part of the law of Christ anyway, mm. I feel like there's more to it than just the, the Ten Commandments. Do you guys agree? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, like, it's not really more like uh, there was more things that were added to it. If you now, let's take Moses as a case study. You see that um, God gave the Ten Commandments, all right? The Bible says that um, the children of Israel knew the acts of God, but, Jesus, uh, but Moses knew the ways of God. So it was like a different kind of relationship. 
you could see that the Israelites, they were functioning based on the Ten Commandments. But you wonder, um, Moses, when, when God actually became angry with him, you know, because he struck the rock, you know, it, it's not something in the Ten Commandments at all. It's not something that um, is weak. But it's another, this thing, another class. It, it, it's a kind of relationship-based kind of thing. So it's not just that, um, I, I believe it's more, more like the moment you go outside the will and the dictates of God, that's when you, you start seeing sin. And that's when um, uh, you, you have the repercussion of it. Yeah, because like, because it, it's like, like what you said, a lot of time, like for years we thought, you know, when you go against the Tenth Commandment, that's the, that's the mean sin. But a lot of time, when, like he said, when we try to find our own will o over God's will, that's when we start sinning. And then we, we try to identify it as, oh, it's the will of God. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we try to a lot, I feel like a lot of Christians, we try to cover our sin with the will of God just to, you know, downplay it. Yeah. But once you start, like, like you said, once you, uh, um, you uh, forsake your duties at home as a wife and a husband, you're sinning against God. Because the Bible says the man is the, the head of the house. When you, once you like move from that aspect, you're sinning against God. You're going against the will of God. Okay, let's um, take it to the beginning. Uh, when the Israelites were in Egypt, mm -hmm. they were uh, obeying the Egyptian laws. Mm -hmm. Okay, so whatever the pharaoh, uh, the pharaoh want them to do is what they have to mm -hmm. uh, obey. If they go against it, they, uh, um, they punish them. So when God was creating a new nation, mm -hmm. so he brought them out of Egypt in order to create a new nation. Yeah. Okay, so by creating a new nation, he ought to give them a set of rules that they have to follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that became the Ten Commandments. He, he said complaints that, that I took you out of Egypt. So it is God's own uh, uh, power to make sure that the new nation that he has brought forth will succeed. How can you succeed? Or how can they succeed? They have to find uh, something to run around it, to check everybody's uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. And that came about the, 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 the Ten Commandments. So when you read it carefully, he told them what to do and what they need not to do. Mm -hmm. Why was he saying this? In order for them to live a, a comfortable life, harmonious life. Okay, because the moment we start uh, operating like um, our old life in Egypt, it's not permissible in this new nation. So you have to cut off from that lifestyle. In Egypt, they have um, statues that they worship as their gods. But here, God is saying that you don't need anything. In, in heaven, on earth, under the sea, mm -hmm. uh, under the earth, don't make any image. So he's tr trying to create a difference. Okay, that there you need this, but here you don't need it. So when you go back to do what you were doing in Egypt, you have disobeyed him. And that will bring about what is called sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is more to do if we're able to get the, 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 the basic and God's target audience were the Israelites. Okay, because He is using Israel as a model mm -hmm. for the other nations to come, to come and, and see. Uh, okay, so when you are copying, you are doing the same thing like what the the other nations are doing, then there's, there's, no, there's no difference. There's no difference at all. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are the, uh, the, the Ten Commandments, uh, the, 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 the laws governing the Israelites. And you can see from there 
all the way up to today that now these laws are, are the moral laws that we are using. Mm -hmm. So that is what I, I can put in for, for now. And um, going, also going back to what Pastor has been discussing, or we have been discussing rather in Bible study recently, um, when Pastor had said that there are certain things that the Holy Spirit can tell you, and going against that, for instance, in the story in the Bible where uh, I think it was Moses and his wife were going into a new land, and Moses was worried that his wife was going to be no, that's taken Abraham. over. Abraham, yes, thank you. <laughs> Abraham was worried that the king would, you know, want to have his wife, as we all know back in those days. If the king wanted a woman, he would have her, irrespective of whether she was already married or whether she wanted to or not. So. The Bible says that he was told, and even the, the, the Spirit of the Lord ministered in ahead, ahead of him to let the king know that if you touch that woman, you're dead. Mm -hmm. And so we debated about that a little bit because somebody in the congregation had said that, well, he lied. He told the king that this woman who was actually his wife is his sister. And we deliberated on that for a very long time because the truth of the fact of the matter is, she was his wife. And looking into it, the way we would look into it, is that that was a lie. But understanding that the Holy Spirit had already ministered to him, you know what I'm saying, and ministered to even the, 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 the king himself, him following that instruction is not necessarily sinning against God. So there's kind of, a, I don't want to say a gray area, but mm. kind of like a gray area, where it comes to what we might think sin is versus what God wants us to do, and going against that could could result into sin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, regarding that, you know, it's it just shows us that we we need to go back to the basics, like um, Brasset said, like what sin actually is. Basically, it's um, going outside the dictates of of God. So it's not really more, it's not, I don't really think it's a morality thing because um, it's, it's not just, you know, that, okay, you, uh, you, 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 you stole, you, uh, because sin does not just deal with the act, it deals with the motive, it deals with, you know, the very core, why it happened, it deals with that very core. So, and it also deals with, you know, where your allegiance is. Is it to God and is it to this? So, even speaking about Abraham, if we even noticed his sojourn, you know, he wasn't actually meant to actually go to Egypt, you know. But they, when, when he went to Egypt, he had to tell, tell a lie. And even if you notice in his sojourn, his sojourn was supposed to, go a little more, where God was taking him was supposed to go a little more shorter, but it, if you read it, it, it became extended, mm -hmm. it, it became extended. But, you know, the fact that um, he sinned didn't mean that God was no longer with him at all, because God will still, will still show mercy, God will still, will still, you know, show mercy on whom he show mercy. That's why I say it's relationship based, you know. What God has told you in the secret place, did God tell you that, okay, like for example now, um, as a guy now, as a guy, um, you go to your wardrobe, there are some clothes that you know that is, is innocent too, is, um, is covering, is, but you know, you feel like the Holy Spirit is telling you, I don't want these clothes, I don't want, or even something like prayer, like, uh, you know, in the night, maybe in the night you are, uh, you are sleeping and the Holy Spirit just wakes you or prompts you to pray. And because of, you know, this season is really cold now and your eyes are, are still, you know, trying to open small. And, and just when he spoke and you're about to prompt, the sleep came again. And so that thing to you is a sin because you did not obey what to... It's not in the Ten Commandments. It's not in the this thing, but the fact that you—that's why the Bible says, "Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart." So it's just 
once you um, go out from the dictate and the lordship, remove the lordship, you, when you stop acknowledging the lordship of God in your life, that's when, that's, that is when sin has, uh, has, has found its place in your life. Yeah, um, I would say that, um, you see, when you look at Abraham's case, it is very, very interesting. What came to him to discuss such a thing with Sarah? Sometimes when we, we are talking, we, we lose sight about that, that they have had that pre-discussion before entering into the, into the land. What came into him? He, he, he is applying wisdom. Yes. yes. Okay, he is applying wisdom. Let's take preemptive precaution that when we get there, this is what will happen. But if it happens, this is what I'm going to say. Back me. If such a thing did not happen, or such a discussion did not happen, Abraham will go there and say, oh, this is my sister. And Sarah said, what? Mm. You're my husband. Why are you telling me I'm your sister? Yeah. OK, but they have had that mutual agreement that this is what will happen. Other than that, I may die. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. Okay, so as you rightly said, the motive is more important. You see, Bible has emphasized on lies. Now, lies, for example, you are lying to put somebody into trouble. Or bearing false witness. Bearing right? false witness. It talks about, you know, it's, it's wrong to bear false witness. Exactly. But if somebody is going to kill my mother, okay, and then the person is asking me, where is your mother? And I'll tell oh, my mother is in, the, is in the room. So go and kill her? I will say that my mother is not there. That would be technically you have sinned too. I'm not, no, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 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 um, I'm telling the person that my mother is in the room sleeping. Go and, go and kill her. her. I have uh, 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 been part of the whole murder. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I should lie to save someone, I would do it. Mm. I would do it because I'm applying wisdom at that point. I'm saving someone. I'm not putting somebody in debt. Like Kenny had said, which brought a lot of clarity into it, sin does not, it's not about morality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. your, your personal input here about, you know, your mom and everything else, that, that is heavily, like, dealing with morals. What you perceive as right and wrong. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And when he said that sin has everything to do with acknowledging the Lordship of God in your life. Now, in that sense, you are you are doing it for the right you are doing it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. rather. You are keeping your mom from being handed over to, you know, her death or whatever. But at the same time, that does not necessarily mean that you did not sin. You, did not sin. you get what I'm saying? Because morally it morally it depending on exactly what exactly the motive is, you cannot just base it on your moral conviction. You get what I'm saying? Depending on different other factors, then you can now come and say, okay, you know what? This was a sin or this was not a sin. And that's why this topic is so vast. Right. Because what we think is sin, it might not especially sin. especially referring back to the Old Testament where everything was cut and dry, it was more of like laws, 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 anything, and it was very clear. This is, this is what cute. you do, and, and if you don't do it, this is what you get, you know, about it. But these days, it's you read the Bible, especially in the, in the New Testament, mm. and you get to see that what you would have thought was sin or what you would have thought was morally it's wrong, not. God is backing it. And they also, they, they, uh, the um, great part about it is that, just like you said, God decides whom he shows favor towards. So at the same time, you're also kind of confused with that, okay, is God showing mercy in the sense that this person actually just sinned, but God is also extending, you know, a hand of mercy on, at this end. Yeah. So it's very... Yeah, that is what I, I, I will come in to say that. Let's take, for example, when um, the spies were sent oh, to Jericho. I was actually Jericho. coming there. I was actually <laughs> coming there. The spirit is coming. I, I was actually coming Was there. sent to Jericho. Uh, Rahab 
met them, mm -hmm. kept them. Mm -hmm. So when the people came mm -hmm. looking after them, mm -hmm. what did she say? She said that they had left. They have left. Yeah. Meanwhile, she, she they are she, hiding she's over hiding there. there. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, Rahab was saved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see, when you are saving somebody, <coughs> if, if, if you are saying something in order to make sure that a life is saved, mm -hmm. it, is, it is very, very important to look at it. Putting somebody in danger, you knew that what you are saying isn't true. But you are swearing everything to make sure that that person will go to jail. Because I have sworn that this person should go to jail. <laughs> okay, this is where uh, we, we look at it in, 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 in such a, a, a form that, when we, for me, when I'm saving somebody, I will say something that will save that person rather than put the person into. Okay, so that's, that's yeah. Okay. So the thing about sin is that we have to understand sin is like the definition of sin is rebelling against the will of God. Okay, so now like what he's saying to save someone, now your question comes: Are you rebelling against God? That's what I'm saying. Or are you following the will of God? Because if you're trying to save somebody, if you know that person is about to be killed and you're trying to save that person, I feel like there will be more grace upon that but now if you if you it's the code it's really in a gray area if you think because one you are sinning against god being that you are lying but then you are saving somebody mm -hmm. so it's like it would i feel like if we try to define it, it 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 won't make sense to a lot of people because we it's like a moral it's like a human thing and it's also you are doing the will of God at the same time. Yeah. If God now come and minister to you and say, you know, this is the direction you want to go. So I feel like sometimes you should hear, like you should think and apply wisdom before, you know, in situation that before you speak. Let, let me, you get um, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, can I call me? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Huh? Because um, one, of, one thing we should know is our dependence on the Holy Spirit, you know, in this kind of matters. Like, for example, um, it's all about faith, you know, what God thinks, all right? Like, for example, we talked about the uh, spies, you know. In, we, in, it's not just the spies. Let's also talk about Jephthah. He sacrificed his daughter. I was just about to talk about that. The spirit is moving. <laughs> so he, was, he, he sacrificed his daughter. Mind you, that is a sin. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, the ordinances of God is that no... No human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yes, but yet, in Hebrews, in the midst of all that thing, God was able to find faith. Faith. He said, but you see something like, by faith, Jephthah. The, the New Testament was like, oh, he... The, the truth was that he actually, if, if it's, he actually... Uh, not, he actually sinned, not based on, okay, his will, it's just because, okay, he made this pronouncement. And that's because the knowledge of God as of that time in Israel was missing. You know, they were incorporating all this, um, this thing, uh, cultures from their this thing. And that, that thing kind of, they knew God, but they didn't know his ways anymore. You know, in the, in the book of Judges, they didn't know his ways anymore. But Jephthah, in the midst of that thing, in the midst of all, all, the, all those this thing, sacrificing his daughter, this person, Rahab, in the midst of, Lying. God found faith. So this one, it's there are some answers. It's only God that can answer it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I was about yeah, to say. It's, it's like, only and someone like the situation you made. Yeah, you perhaps you did it from your own decision. But the thing is that you know the ordinances of God. At the same time, you want to help somebody. The thing now is that it's not even the the question is not what you think. It's what, what, God what is God thinking? Mm -hmm. Will God look at that thing that you the as, 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 and, and, and say that, is this, is, is this what I told you to do? Mm -hmm. So that's the, we, um, we, we, might be, we, we might be right in our, in our yeah, thinking. Right, yeah. That's why the Bible says that uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean 
not on your own understanding, especially with the area of sin. So uh, 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 I wanted I wanted to say something in regards to also what you had said about that whole you know sacrificing his daughter and things like that. I feel like yes, there's also an aspect of faith, but there's also a, an aspect of favor that God finds in His own people, mm. who, whatever the situation is. For instance, um, this might not be directly related to what you had said, but the king of Moab, who you know sacrificed his son at the war, we're discussing this a um, few weeks later with Abel and a couple of our other friends. Um, God had already spoken to, you know, to, um, I think, Edom, the king of Edom and the other different two kingdoms that were coming, that you guys are going to prevail. You guys are going to win the war. You guys are going to take over the place and destroy the Moabites. And in the, in, the, in the aspect of the whole fight, the king of Moab saw that he was getting taken over. So he took his son and he sacrificed the son on that war. Now, at that particular point, the, the 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 calamity that was gonna fall on them. Do you get what I'm saying? Was the diverted. So at the end of the day, people can say, okay, and I had that was my position. That was my position at the whole time. I felt that okay, well, God had said that they were gonna destroy the Moabites. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so far as I'm concerned, what the king of Moab did is wrong. You get what I'm saying? You are first of all, you don't even worship God. You don't acknowledge God you are sacrificing your eldest son. You get what I'm saying? That shouldn't affect anything. God has already spoken it. God has already said it. It should happen. You get what I'm saying? But there are different principles in, in the word of God and the whole, this whole sacrifice thing that, that that day my eyes opened to understand that God follows certain principles and even to the point where you might think that because you have also you are a Christian, you are well abiding this thing mm -hmm. and that, but there are certain things that are considered sin, there are certain things that God will show favor to yeah. and just like disregard sin or follow behind certain things that we might consider sin. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of hard and I feel like I feel like there are times where I have a grip on what sin is and then mm -hmm. there are other times where I read another story in the Bible and I get shot. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like what you say with Jasper, because I, and we have to remember he made a confident with God. So if he had went back on that confident that he made with God, that would have been a greater sin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he clearly said, whoever embraced me first, I will sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that was, that's what it comes down to like what you said. We can't lean our own thinking to define what sin is. My friends, my family, my fans out there, how are you all doing? I am Dexmond Walter Oreahi. Uh, first, I want to introduce these books that a friend of mine, Edwin, introduced to me. I want you to go have a taste of it. Are you tired of unanswered and ineffective prayers? Are you really tired of, of unanswered and ineffective prayers? Need to learn targeted and effective prayers? Just go get these books. Just okay. go get it. The first one is God of Judgment, and the other one is Second Chance, written by Pastor Dr. Jerry Udo. Just go get this book, okay, and see it to the turnaround. There is power mighty in the word of God. All right, bye.